Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I have my top war offense teams for the month of December 2021. In this video, I walk through the best war offense teams in the game based upon what I am seeing in war in sort of diamond alliances. So I will just say I'm in you know, one of the largest alliances in the game. I am generally competing against other players that have unlocked every character that matters and have them all geared up. And so it, it does impact uh, my, my rankings and how I look at things. So you're getting to see things from my perspective. Uh, and what I'm gonna be showing you here, this is my tier list that is linked below. Uh, I have this as a Google Doc, and I try to keep it pretty up to date. It's always it's linked below in the description. It's also linked on my Discord. Um, but what what I have here, this is like I said, this is based on kind of having all the characters built up. Obviously, if let's say you're in Platinum One or Platinum Two, and you guys don't have all these characters built up, you know, I have people ask me, "Will Weapon X work at Gear 12?" Okay, well, I guess it depends on the size of the opponent, right? If, if Axemen is your biggest team, obviously they're going to be way up on this list. If you have a 700K Axemen and all your other teams are 200K, well, obviously that team is going to be very important for you. But, of course, any team when it's super large compared to the other teams it's fighting against is going to be better. What this list is about is sort of looking at the teams if they're equal. When I, and I'm at a level war where everyone kind of has everything. And you could see here that the Tier 1 team in its own tier – is Weapon X. This team here, you can see I have it, I have uh, three of the characters at uh, in teal gear at gear tier 16, the other two at gear tier 15. This team beats everything in war right now. It is super important and is, so, is absolutely clear, to, clear on its own, to be in its own tier. It is still the only hard counter to Heroes for Hire with Shang-Chi. Infinity Watch can beat that team, but it's not 100%, and the, is particularly if the other side is more red stars or whatever, you can't. Certainly punching up, it can be you know, uh, not a guarantee. Whereas Weapon X is a, versus Heroes for Hire is a cakewalk. It is one of the, is one of the easiest fights I've ever had in uh, Marvel Strike Force. And the team beats everything else. It's really if the other side's got Dormammu on defense, and you know, that's, that's something that I've been, you know, I have certainly seen in war. Weapon X is going to have to be part of the solution for you. If the other side it makes the mistake, in my opinion, of putting Weapon X on defense, and sometimes people do that as a strategy, uh, depending on sort of how many Heroes for Hire their alliance has versus the opponent, how many Weapon X they have, uh, you're going to need a Weapon X in a mirror match to clear it. It's very hard to clear without a Weapon X. Um, so it is really clearly in its own tier, in my opinion, uh, this is obviously uh, the new top war offense team with a legendary uh, that corner that is at the corner a stone of that. So it's not surprising, but that is without a doubt the best war offense team with with no question whatsoever. Now, I have moved from last month some some teams around here at the top. In tier two, the next team that I have, the next two teams I have are Infinity Watch and Eternals. And it's a little tricky. So l let me just show you here. <clears throat> let me go, let's go to the infi to Infinity Watch. I have a, a even bigger Infinity Watch team. And Infinity Watch, you know, this team is fantastic. It's another team that beats almost everything. You know, it will against Heroes for Hire. Um, it can't depending on how big your team is and how big the Heroes for Hire are it, is that can be not a one hundred percent proposition. Okay, but it beats everything else pretty easily. Um, you know, it can e even be its Eternals. It can be, you know, depending on sort of what the setup is. Okay, some there are some Eternals defenses. If somebody's created a super team with their Eternals and Doom and all sorts of other things, maybe um, they, they, if they're going to struggle against Darmamu and uh, Infinity Watch will. But like other than, you know, certain types of very specialized teams, Infinity Watch basically beats everything. Um, they're the clear kind of number two team. However... You see, I've got Eternals listed kind of in the tier with them. And it's really hard to know where to put Eternals because Eternals is only two characters. And they're super strong. But, you know, how strong they are depends on the third, fourth, and fifth you're running with them. So if you're running, let's say, Loki and Cable and doing that kind of speed thing, well, that that's awesome if you're going up against the enemy Eternals that, that are, and you outspeed them. 
great. That that's the smart way to do that. But if you're running up against Infinity Watch, going with the Eternals plus like Loki and Cable and whatever is not the best strategy. You're going to need to have some other stuff with them. So you know the the kind of just speed Eternals is not going to be as good as Infinity Watch, but Eternals plus a bunch of other good characters uh, is going to be better than Infinity Watch. It really is sort of dependent, but I, I think Eternals, you know, depending on what you run with them, you know, if you're running them just the two of them <clears throat> solo, you know, they might even be down more in this tier, uh, you know, or more limited. Depends. I'd probably still keep them in this tier, just kind of at the low end of this tier. If but they certainly can rise above Infinity Watch if they have the right team around them. So Eternals, like I said, are a very special case. You know, this is the first time in the game where we have two characters that are so strong that, you know, they can really be two teams, you know, entire teams of five on their own. Um, you know, that and they're, the, they're sort of an insane level of power creep there. Uh, but, you know, I think that, they deserve to be on this tier no matter who the uh, other three characters are. Now, the next team on my list is actually Ry Risen on the list. It's really, it's really something. This is actually the first time in the, uh, the, this tier list where we had a team rise so much after being out for a long time, and that's Shadowland. And I got to tell you, it's really interesting that I actually moved down the um, Secret Avengers Kestrel used to be kind of up in this tier. I moved it down below Shadowland in tier three. And the reason why Shadowland is so high, and I'll show you my Shadowland uh, here, is that Shadowland is actually really versatile at beating some of the newest best teams. So for example, New Warriors, you know, it's really helpful <laughs> to have Shadowland because when your hanger is up, um, Moon Knight gets has de when he gets deflect, he gets twenty percent speed bar, and of course, a hanger means that they start with deflect, and so he goes super fast, and then he clears the uh, positive effects on the enemy and applies all these. So he clears all positive effects, and then applies up to three additional negative uh, effects on each enemy. Very, very devastating move and gives you a huge advantage. And then if you're up against, let's say, the new warriors, the night nurse can just flip the uh, debuffs here with her ultimate, okay? And then turn all those debuffs that Cloak puts on your team into buffs. So this can be a very effective uh, counter there. And the Shadowland team is so fast that they can outspeed a lot of other teams. I mean, there are even people using them against let's say mercenaries doom the people use them against uh um uh, you know against uh you know certain eternals teams and so on <clears throat> because they can have a chance if if hangers up in particular so they're just a very versatile team you know when i first was making videos about shadowland i'm like well you know there's only a limited number of essential t4s and you don't really need to gear up daredevil and moon knight that much or daredevil and electro much now and this and that and you know, that advice was all very good for when it when Shadowland first came out, you know, uh, I think 10 months ago now or something like that. Um, you know, they were they you didn't need them up as high. But now, at least in my level of war that I'm in, you know, my actually Shadowland is on the small side. People are really going hard into Shadowland because the team is just very, very important. And I think they're more versatile than the next team on the list. So the next team on the list is Secret Avengers plus Kestrel. And the Kestrel, you see, I have her underlined because I do think the team is an entirely different tier with Kestrel. And um, let me show you exactly what I, what you know, so what the sort of team is that I'm talking about here. So this is my Secret Avengers Kestrel team. And with Kestrel, this team just gets taken to all new heights. Um, the team is still actually very, very good without um, without uh, Kestrel. You could throw in Falcon or something. And the team takes out a lot of opponents. All right. You know, Falcon will give them a little bit of speed bar, you know, and then, but the rest of the team is doing a lot. You know, Fury also makes the team go faster if you use a special early, or, you know, he can certainly put, um, you know, but with Kestrel, he can summon, have his summons, you know, uh, 
you know, attack defense down characters to get her pings uh, from her passive where she pings uh, uh, when uh, uh, a character with defense down is attacked. And the team just has a ton of staying power, particularly at high red stars and gear. They scale very well with gear, and they're a very, very good team. But they're not as versatile as Shadowland. They don't take on some of the very tough opponents um, that Shadowland does. Um, but I, they're fantastic on war offense. They're definitely better on war offense than on war defense. On war defense, uh, Maria Hill has a summon ability or um, where she's going to create summons. Nick Fury does as well if you use Fury with them. And what ends up happening is this team ends up getting to a point where it can very easily lose to a team like Axemen or Symbiotes, depending on the, the uh, what else there there is with those three characters. So, uh, you know, so really this is a team that's better used on war offense. An important war offense team, but not as central it, 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 from, you know, it particularly recently as Shadowland is. That's what I've been seeing. All right, so we talked about this in the next tier down, and this was a, something that I did for, for the first time here as I put Shadowland and Secret Avengers with Kestrel in their own tier. This was new to this video. And this tier is Secret Avengers without Kestrel. And, you you know, you if you want to know what the fifth is, a lot of the typical fifths are, are uh, you know, characters like Emma, Namor, you know, Squirrel Girl, Falcon, whatever. Okay. <clears throat> um. What, this is Weapon X without Omega Red because I know a lot of players haven't unlocked Omega Red. So if you built up the team but you don't have Omega Red yet, uh, they're kind of in this range. They can beat a lot of stuff, but you know he really makes that team way, way better. Uh, and you have to be careful who you bring them against, basically. They, 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 they're much more matchup dependent, whereas with Omega Red, they kind of just beat everything. <clears throat> New Warriors are in this category. I, I think I see them in my level run more on defense. Um, they, they are very good on offense, and if you're doing a big punch-up uh, against another alliance that has a, is much larger than yours, then having new warriors on offense can make sense. Um, they can just be a pain to deal with on defense. Um, but on offense, um, you know, with without without Kestrel, which oh, I'm just assuming he's not on the team, I mean, that yes, she'd make the team better. If it's like new warriors, Kestrel and Doom or something, they'd be uh, there. And actually, one other uh, team that I'm going to put up in this category um, and I really should have put here already. Uh, here is <clears throat> Brotherhood plus Doom. I'm seeing <clears throat> more and more people bring Brotherhood Doom on offense. And so what that looks like um, here, it's actually bro uh, Brotherhood Doom plus Falcon. And then that that is with um, Magneto, Blob, and Toad. And so essentially what happens is, you know, to, you know what's going to happen there is Magneto is going to blind everyone in the beginning. You know, that's going to be very useful against certain enemies, uh, you know, like new warriors or something. He's going to, you know, if they've got a big attack they're doing in the beginning, Mag Magneto is going to get speed bar, make sure everyone's blind. Let me show you exactly how that works because that's important. So... If we go here, you can see um, on spawn, fill speed bar by 15% plus 15% per Brotherhood Alley. So he's going to get, you know, 30% plus the 15 is 45% speed bar to start. So it'll outrace a lot of teams, you know, get, and then he will use his ultimate. Or you'll use his ultimate and you'll put unavoidable blind on everybody okay <laughs> and then and then you're going to have with it to, you know toad goes very early okay and he's going to put taunt on blob so that will give you time uh for essentially you to kill everybody with doom now blob is really valuable and useful if you have him as striker because this is sort of his assist counter takes off turn meter and puts slow on the enemy. So he's kind of can be this kind of unstoppable wall. He's a very underrated character. And then, and then um, you know, that team uh, will do very well because Doom's very strong. But that that's what I'm starting to see on punch-up sort of wars. What, you know, you're having alliances pull their Dooms for offense, that sort of thing. It's always been a move that, that has occasionally been made. 
uh, but I'm seeing it more now because I just think Doom is more a figured out. Uh, you know, people have figured out how to beat Doom reliably enough um, that it's not worth it for the defense wins. Now, obviously, at your level of war, this could be different. It could be that Doom is so tricky that he still gets a lot of defense wins, but, you know, it's it, we're at a stage now where, you know, some te- some some he's still usually in defense, but some players in certain matchups put him on offense. Um, all right, let's go back down here. We talked about New Warriors. Talk about X Factor. X Factor is <clears throat> kind of fallen a little bit. You know, uh, they're not where they once were, and the reason why is you know X Factor <clears throat> was very important for beating <clears throat> Doom uh, Doom you know doom team so long shot and chatter star with rhino as the fifth were beating brotherhood doom reliably with like namor or something like that in the fifth they were beating the old uncanny doom teams reliably but now you know uh at my level more people tend to be having magic and using magic uh and uncanny's doing his own thing brotherhood doom yeah that's still a team that's out there but you know, Doom sometimes being run with the Mercs, and then X Factor doesn't work well there because uh, Taskmaster will just go after your long shot and defeat him, and then that kind of destroys X Factor. They really need long shot, and so um, you know that you know that is uh, unfortunately um, you know something that is kind of lowering the value of X Factor. Now, it is what it is. They're still very good. They still beat a lot of stuff. This team is a four-piece, four basically beats almost anything below that top tier. But, of course, you know we're looking at what the top tier is. So when I look at my war defense tier list, you're not going to bring X Factor against these kind of teams. Heroes for Hire, Weapon X, Infinity Watch, Eternals, New Warriors, You know these, these top Mercs teams. They don't work there, right? And you're not going to bring them probably against the New Warrior, maybe, you know, you, there are some teams that might work there, but you get the point, right? Like they're kind of beating these more of these tier three teams. And so they're just not what they once were. All right. Below that, we have the uncanny X-Men with magic. And, you know, this just goes to show you now how the the devs are really devaluing the teams like Black Order, some of the older teams that have already have heavy investment. If you add magic to Uncanny X Men, they they reliably beat Black Order. They reliably beat you know Marauders. They reliably beat Mercenaries. That sort of thing. And so, uh, the reality is that I just think this team is better overall. I mean, I'd rather have this team than have a Black Order and try to mirror match Black Order. Uh, you have a more sure win with this team at this point. You know, it's not uh, leaps and bounds better, but it's slightly better. OK, and so that's that's the value proposition. That's why people are building magic in my level of war is a lot of them are older players and they've been playing longer. They have built up uncanny from when that was the arena meta. And so <clears throat> magic freshened up that team. So for the rest of this, you know what, what? There are some changes here. Black Order, you know, is more of a average to below average war offense team now. It appears sometimes on war defense, sometimes on war offense. It's very good at beating Uncanny if they don't have magic. If they do have magic, then not so much. Uh, then it and then it will it will lose. Uh, it, you know, most likely yeah, you you can beat it, but it's it's tricky. Um, Black Order does beat some other stuff, but a lot of the newest meta, the stuff that you know, like I said, it's kind of the it, it, you know the high up stuff in the my war defense tier list. Um, you know, is, you know, unfor- uh, unfortunately for Black Order, they just don't beat anymore. Astonishing X-Men, you know, it's a war offense team. It's kind of limited. They're very, very good at enemies that have summons. So if in your level of war, if people are putting like secret Avengers on defense, then sure, Astonishing X-Men are super important. If Astonishing X-Men are your biggest team, yes, they're going to be very valuable, but uh, because they're just so big, but just if everything you have everything kind of equal size, um, they're really kind of a flex team. And people before Magic arrived, people were kind of throwing them as like a hybrid team with Uncanny on defense. You know, I'll show you kind of <clears throat> the size of my Ax- uh, Axemen team. There's people I know just throw their Axemen on defense as like a filler team. Um, they're just they're just they're okay. I mean, they're just not <clears throat> they're not they're not 
a team, I mean, if you look at the best war defense teams, what are you going to throw them up against? You're not going to put them against heroes for higher weapon X, Infinity Watch, Eternals, New Warriors. Um, they're not going to beat these kind of teams, okay? The, you know, Mercs with Doom or Surfer and Emma, they're not going to beat any of that stuff. They're not going to beat these Doom teams. And they're not going to, you know, they're, they're not a guaranteed proposition against these teams down here. So they're just sort of, you know, they're beating kind of lower end teams. Um, they're good for what they are. I think it's good to have some on offense so you can beat teams with summons, but they are what they are. Hydra 3.0, it's a little bit, uh, this is Baron Zemo, Red Skull, Grenadier, and then some uh, other uh, Hydra. You know, they're, they are probably more useful now that the Merc variants are becoming more important because they still kind of hold up against some of those variants. It depends on what the variant is. Um, so they're kind of still held their value. Um, but whenever the mercs disappear from defense, then they will become hybridized again. They'll turn back into something like Hell Hydra, where it's more of like Zemo's putting ability block and it gets spread by Hella or something like that. <clears throat> maybe they'll maybe you'll see some sort of hybrid with some of the web warriors, that sort of thing. Um, the next, the next tier, I've actually moved X Force up a little bit, and I've moved some of these other ones down. I moved Skill Military down quite a bit. So let, let's talk a little bit about that. I actually have a pretty sizable skill military. And the issue for skill military right now, there's my skill military, decent size. The issue for skill military right now is just their, their bread and butter was beating mercenaries. And so to, uh, you know, so they were just destroying the old Shuri Mercs, uh, uh, you know, Wakanda Mercs sort of teams. Uh, then when, so then the, the meta started evolving, at least at my level. So it was Korath and Ultimus Mercs. Well, Ultimus deletes Red Guardian, uh, because he gets all this extra damage when, an, and turn meter when an enemy taunts and Red Guardian taunts on spawn. So then this team was like, okay, well then where's this team going to? Well, then Mercs now are getting hybridized to be something like Doom with Mercs or, or, uh, Silver Surfer and, and Emma with Mercs. And so then, you know, basically this team doesn't do anything against any of that. So basically they just sort of either people throw them on defense or they're used against sort of smaller teams that are not as important. They're, they're just sort of a throw in extra war, like lower end war offense team. Now they're not beating anything important. Um, and you really need to make sure you have the right matchup. You know, they can still beat certain teams. They can still beat certain Sinister Six, Wave 1, whatever, but they're not beating anything that really matters. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, so that's why they've moved down. That is why uh, X-Force, and so why, you're saying, well, wait, with Philosopher, well, X-Force is this old power Cup team. Why have they actually relatively moved up? It's not because they've gotten any better. It's just that, what X Force does well is they go fast and they get some early damage in. And they've gotten really power crept because the whole way the team works is that Negasonic's alt uh, does a bunch of damage and then it's, suppo it's supposed to drop some characters under 50%, which gives turn meter to a speed bar to, uh, um, to uh, X23, right? Well, it's uh, so there you go to, uh, yeah, so. It gives below when a when a character's health or when an enemy drops below fifty percent health, fill speed bar by forty percent. Well, it, as their damages become less important, you know, relatively imp impressive, it's just harder for them to do it. But the the fact is that they still go first because they get um, they fill speed on spawn. And she, you know, they get speed bar with the full team on war offense, and so. They go first, and so if they have enough damage, they can sort of get the jump, and speed is always uh, in a, the most important thing in a game like this, a turn-based game. And so they've held up a little bit better than some of these teams below. And these other teams are just more situational. Sinister Six is great if the opponent's got a lot of buffs and they're not particularly fast or super OP. I mean, they can just punch up big against teams. They can punch up big on the Black Order. They can punch up big on... Uh, wave one, that sort of thing. Brotherhood 2.0 punches up big on symbiotes, but if not, you know, and Tech Nerva and the Brawlers teams and stuff like that, but not much else. 
Skill military, like I said, they really have to pick and choose their spots. Symbiotes are great if the opponent's summoning a lot, like if they have their doom without taunts and things that are going to keep your symbiotes from killing the doom bots. Uh, or, you know, if they, they're, uh, you know, they have, you know, their sinister six or something, you can beat them cause they have a summon, but they don't beat much else. Uncanny X-Men without magic. I mean, that team is just, you know, and they would certainly get beat easily by, by black order punch up, but they also can get beat by a lot of other stuff as well. Certainly any team with Kestrel, uh, without magic basically makes the team worthless. Uh, web warriors. I kind of have down here. Um, you know, I, I showed you guys in my video on the test server how the team does. I mean, this is sort of where I expect them to be. Uh, and they, they may drop a little further than this. They're a team that doesn't beat stuff like Black Order, um, can beat, can sort of barely beat stuff like the Emirators, you know, with, with you know, the full team with Sabretooth and all that. But they're they're kind of in that range. So that's sort of kind of where I have them. But that that could change up and down. But that's based on purely based on what I've done on the test server with the full team uh, at Gear Tier 15 in more practice mode. <laughs> so that that definitely can play out differently in game. But I think that I've played with the team enough with full gear and T4s and everything <laughs> that I would be surprised if they're you know maybe they could be in this tier. I think they more that it's more likely that they're more in this tier, but they're not gonna this is I'm pretty sure that they're in this range. Uh this team, which is supernatural with Hella instead of Elsa, I still use this team in war, but you have to really know how to play it and pick your spots. Used to be awesome when wave one with Black Widow was a thing. You don't see that anymore. Black Widow's usually with Skeletary. Um, but you know, it's, it does well against certain other teams. It does well against some wave one teams. It does well against sinister six, but you really need to pick your spots. Fantastic four plus Ultron. People call it Fantron. Um, very limited and what it beats. It beats, it's beats fantastic four with she Hulk beats some other stuff, but it's, it's pretty limited. You need to have a pretty big one to, to do well. Ultron, not very important anymore or more. And then these are just tier seven stuff. I keep this, these old teams in here just to give people, because otherwise I get people asking me sort of how does Supernatural do or, you know, regular power armor or whatever. Um, so this is a good sense. Hopefully this gave you a good sense of where war is at right now at high levels. Um, I, I will say if you're not, if you're at a level where you don't have as much stuff unlocked or geared up, Hopefully this gives you a peek into what the future might look like for you as you get more gear and characters. Everybody's eventually going to get these some you know more and more characters geared up, and you're going to experience it just at a different time. So hopefully this can give you a, a sense of what to invest in if you do care about war. All right, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. If you got comments and questions, cheers, jeers, whatever, post it below or go to my Discord. That's linked below. You can also go to my Twitch stream. That's linked below as well. Uh, and please, you know, consider uh, purchasing Amazon coins using the link below. Um, that supports the channel, supports uh, Punk, the guy who does my, uh, my uh, infographics and all that good stuff.